hate this weather. No sun, just clouds. Wet, humid, gross. It's just gross. I lack the feeling of hatred. Ever heard of the Nazis? Yeah, now please tell me that you lack. I still don't see the problem. Yeah, is this Apple? Yeah, this is Garrett Williamson. Uh, I'm calling to uh, report that your Macs are unaware that Nazis are evil human beings. Why is this a problem? Shh, I'm on the phone. What do you mean that Nazis weren't all that bad? Well, it's now that season, the season when everyone announces all their games at E3. It's hot as crap in Nashville, and my pale white butt can't step one foot outside without getting a sunburn. I can't go outside. Well, that's right, Mac. Your computer. Stop demoralizing my aspirations. Well, if the description is still going straight over your head and above the clouds, I'm talking about summer. Hmm, I can smell the humid heat. Oh, and trust me, Tennessee looks gorgeous in the summer, but is it fun to walk around in? Well, at least for my fair blonde self, absolutely not. I am the Mexicans. <laughs> I love the ocean and I love lakes. To go to a big lake or the coast is my dream in summertime and why? Well, there's a little piece of happiness that was once created. It's like deeply looking out into the mystic ocean and envisioning true happiness, just treading across the waters. Wave runners. These things are one of the greatest inventions of all time. You do not understand the definition of happiness until you've driven one of these babies. Big waves, big jumps, speed, donuts. It rocks. So what better way to waste away your summer than to be sitting in front of an old TV and playing a video game, right? Wave race, blue storm for the Nintendo GameCube. A game Game about race game. Race game. The game about racing and jet skis. While most sports games I'm totally against just because I find them utterly pointless, racing games I not only can dig, but I'm actually very naturally good at. I've always had a knack for speed and racing. I love them. But I have a question. Um, why is Venom on the front cover? So let's have a little history lesson here. Wave Race first saw the light of day when it was released on the Nintendo 64 in 1996, and it was nothing short of fun. I grew up with this game. It's my childhood. Nintendo was all like, oh, hey, yeah, here's Super Mario RPG and what? Bam! 3D graphics, cool water graphics, and accurate mechanics plays just like an actual jet ski and whatnot. It truly was a beauty. It felt great to play. It felt like driving an actual PWC on the water, and I know because as it may be clear, I've driven a Wave Runner more than once. Everything about it, from the controls to the stages to the music, it was all very well presented and performed, and all around just a load of fun. Then comes the early 2000s. The GameCube era. The sixth generation. Wham! Super Mario 128, showing off how powerful this new system was and how much it graphically improved. And what popped up with the release of the GameCube was a sequel to the original Wave Race 64 called Wave Race Blue Storm. And this is where Venom on a Jet Ski comes in. I mean, maybe it's just a bad Maybe it's just a maybe it's just front cover. Maybe it's Venom. Donkeys. Sure, yeah, let's just take everything that was great about the soundtrack for the Nintendo 64 and throw it away and play three chords because this is what America loves, right? Because cool kids don't listen to well-written music. Maybe it's just a song. Maybe they just made a mistake and didn't get the theme song right, which is extremely... The soundtrack's bad. Bland beats with pathetic chords lacking melodies making all these songs completely forgettable? Oh yeah, I could dig this. Sorry guys, but cool does not mean three chords nobody cares about and will be forgotten two minutes from now. Listen, there are some great songs written over three chords, but that's because they were used correctly. Here it's like they forgot what they were writing and just picked a beat to play over and play the first three chords they learned from guitar lessons they took last week. Okay, so we got championship, time attack. Ooh, look at that. Showing off your GameCube graphical powers, I see. <laughs> this is fun. Look at that ripple. That's cool. What else we got here? St stunt mode? I'll be back for you. Multiplayer? Multiplayer's for losers. Oh, wow. Lots more characters this time around, and... Wait, does each character have their own song? Man, this would be a cool idea if the music didn't suck! Serena Del Mar and Crew Chief is Louis... Wait, Crew Chief? So every character now has their own announcer guy? It's not this guy? Get ready for the first race! Okay, well, I'm picking Serena because she's hot. Okay, first race, Dolphin Park. Welcome, Welcome to, to Dolphin, Dolphin Park. Park. Originality! Three, two, one, go! Okay, you passed the first board. I already hate this guy. Oh, thanks, Mr. Sunshine, for informing me that I managed to do what we all should be able to do if we aren't stupid. No need for me to be here anymore. So controlling the jet ski still feels accurate, but compared to 64, it's just... Eh. It's honestly far harder to learn the physics and overall controls of this game than it was with Wave Race 64. Everything's far heavier, and I feel like it takes a lot more just to turn the darn thing. Shh. Dang it. Poop.
farts, bears. In fact, I'm just about positive there's a half a second delay before my character is fully turning the way I want her to. Basically, this is how I found myself playing this game. That's not the most fun way to experience a game. And there's no, but Garrett, you're just biased and you prefer 64 more just because he's 64. No! These controls are hard to begin with and Wave Race 64 was easy to get into from the get-go. After I got used to them, it's not bad. And like I said, it's still a pretty good depiction of the real deal, but it still definitely is harder to control. You got a turbo. A turbo? Wait, so I can charge this thing up by passing buoys on the correct side? Okay, fine, I'll give this game a thumbs up on that one. Passing buoys in 64 did make things a bit more interesting, but they occasionally felt more like a task just to survive in the race. In this game, it rewards you for passing them on the correct side. Applause. You did something good. Do flips work in this game the same way they do it? Yep, okay, good, they do. Glad they didn't screw that one up. Yeah. Go! Oh, jeez. That's a painful way to finish a race. Look at the dirtbag that kicked her off. Okay, well, now that we've tested the waters, let's try normal circuit. Lost Temple Lagoon. Okay, you passed the first- Shut up, Louie! For being 2001, the aesthetics of this game are actually really nice. The water looks good and the textures are really well done. Especially being one of the first games for the GameCube, this probably was a good way to show the graphical capabilities of the system if used correctly. Oh! Yay! I got first. Now on to Southern Isle- Welcome to Southern Island. Nah. 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 I, I, I didn't even write this. I didn't. Okay, is that the thing? We're just gonna recycle a bunch of great stages from 64 and shove them in everyone's faces, begging them to love their new GameCube sequel. Listen, I love when developers bring back awesome stages from previous games. But when you put a stage into your game as a stage of the campaign that pops up more than once, this just comes off as a bit annoying. Oh! Yeah, hey, that's alright. You can't win them all. Shut up, Louie! It's called Blue Storm because they added in weather changes as part of the gameplay. In 64, there were hints of that, but nothing like this. I love how they have to get the splashes and rain splatters hitting the camera. Next thing you know, we'll have 40 consoles. G Pass the red boost on the right. Louis mm -hmm. No, stop. Just stop. Oh, thank God. Okay, this actually was a real frustration with 64 that was fixed here. There's an area in one of the stages where there's these things hanging around and tons of them. If you can't very skillfully avoid them, you hit them. And they don't just get run over and slow you down a little. No, they stay there and you fall off. Uh, hey, yeah, I was taught this as a kid. Uh, you never get in the water when there's a thunderstorm. Okay, final race, Arctic Bay. Three, two, one, go! Serena, you... You, you okay there? You don't, you don't need a jacket or something? <sighs> okay, th this, uh, I'm sorry. As a five-year-old, I probably would not have cared, but right now this is bothering me. Yes, I know the same thing happens in Mario Kart or whatever, but Mario is far more cartoony than this. You know what? Frick it. It's a video game. Okay, despite me not liking the music, it definitely does its job. It's not catchy, there's nothing special about it, but it does set the mood for the stage. Wave Race 64 was generalized to one specific style, and the music just complemented either the uplifting, intense, or cool mood. Here, the entire style of the music changes according to the area, and it works fairly well. Presenting the champions of the circuit in third place, Akari Hayami. Oh, so this is their award ceremony? Just naming who won while they're still on their boats in the freezing cold? Convenient. Okay, great. So, Gary, you came in first. Whoa. Gary, you came in second. Cool. And other Gary, you couldn't even make it onto the driveway. This sucks! Wait, didn't you guys die a few episodes back? Fan service. Yeah, you mean all five of them? Okay, well, normal wasn't way too bad. So how bad could the hard circuit be? Oh, my God! Well, that went well. Okay, forget hard mode. What other options do we... That's right. <laughs> Just want everyone to witness how close this was. That's a checkpoint. Yeah, just needed to show that. Okay, so stump mode's still fun. What else? Oh, we got free roam? This is my favorite part of the game right here. If this is free roam, I should be able to go wherever I want. Ain't nobody stopping me. Got free roam, so I'm gonna roam freely. Uh oh, I'm in some hot water right now. 
Look at her. She's literally retiring in the middle of the ocean. I can't do this anymore. Okay, well, fine. Screw this. Okay, so overall, how good is this game, actually? It's decent. Well, it does fix a couple of the issues that Wave Race 64 had. It more often sticks in the shadow of 64's brilliance and does what 64 did, but only half as well. The physics and controls aren't bad, but they're no match for 64's. The stages aren't bad, but most of them were based off of stages from 64, and 64's version was generally better. Though I will say Arctic Bay is much more enjoyable than its 64 counterpart, Glacier Coast. Graphically and aesthetically, the game was obviously a step up from Wave Race 64, but it also was good in its own right for being one of the first games for the GameCube in late 2001. However, musically, this game not only sits in the shadows of 64, but takes a dump while it's at it. Sure, the music might fit the stages, which is an important thing, but is memorable and enjoyable music overall? Not a chance. And Louie, and not just Louie, all the crew members. I like that they add a character to the announcer stuff, but they just kind of got this irritating attitude to them. I assume it was to try and make their game cooler, but it came off as annoying. Every time I miss a buoy, I just want this guy back. <laughs> So all in all, the game's decent, but nothing great. Wave Race 64 definitely still reigns superior. So now what? Taco Bell? Yeah.